Hey everybody, I'm Z Garcia, and today I'm taking a look at a new roll and write. This is Railroad Inc. In this game, the players are going to each have their own board. You're going to be rolling dice and then making connections with railroads, with uh, highways, in order to score the most points you can. Now this game comes in two versions. The one you've seen here, the red version, and the blue version here. Each one is largely the same. There are a couple of variants which you uh, can use. And this one has two specific variations on the game. This one has two other specific variations. You can get both and combine them for a bigger group. But I'm going to be giving you a look at how the game works. We'll come on back after that and I'll tell you what I think of it. I'm also going to, while I'm at the table, show you some of these variants that come in the two separate boxes. I'll see you in a couple of minutes. So here's everything that comes inside of Railroad Inc. In this case, we're looking at the red version. The only difference between this and the blue version down here is these four dice, which are variants. These are two separate variants. In the blue one, you are going to find two other variants. And I'll talk about those in just a little bit. And I'm, in fact, removing these as well. Let me show you how the game works. The game's going to be played over seven rounds, rolling these dice for every one round. And at the end of the game, you're going to get victory points for a few different things on your board here. So let me tell you about those. First thing is, you're going to get victory points for connecting these uh, exits and entrances. Depending on how many you've got in a network, you're going to get a number of victory points. And you score every grouping. You're going to get victory points equal to your longest road. Victory points equal to your longest railroad track. You are going to get points equal to how many of these spaces in the center you have used. You're going to lose victory points for every open on, you know, an unfinished end to a road or a railroad track. This one is just for the variants, and then that's your total over here. So, here's how a round goes. Someone's going to roll all the dice. And you are going to, either while you're looking at the dice, or you can use this little guide here to help you uh, write down what you got. So, you could just, you know... Mark that you got th this one, for example, and I got another one, so I got two of that. And I got this one here, which is that one. And I got this one here, which is that one. That way I no longer need to look at these so the other players can look at them and I can just focus on what I'm doing here. You'll see some of them are railroad tracks, some of them are highways, basically. And I'm trying to connect as many as I can. The first one, and really any of them later on, can begin at one of these uh, exits. But you cannot just put a free-floating one somewhere. I can't just put one out here in the middle of nowhere without touching something else. So, if I was going to use this, for example, I might draw a road here. And that's one of these two. I might even draw another one right next to that one. And that's the other one there. And I would also put here in the top corner what round this is happening in, first round, just to remind me. Now I might... Um, you know what, I'm actually going to put this one here that crosses, so it was this one there, and instead leave that one alone. That way I can get to this track here, which I will go ahead and do that now, like this. That's also done in one, which is this one there. And so I've still got just one straight path, which I'll put in there. Now the other thing I can do is I can add in one of these special ones at the top. I can choose to do that and then I would cross it out. So if I want to do this, I can choose to add that once per round one of them and each one only once in the game. So I might do this and add that in there. So later on continue connecting all of these things. Once everyone has used all four of these dice and you have to use them all if, if at all possible, and possibly taking one of the specials, we go to round two. And in round two, you do the same thing. You might, you know, take that and put it there and so on, and then put the number right there. And um, you are trying to, as I said, just connect all these things. I don't actually have this roll, but assuming I did, I would just do something like that. And now those are all connected. So now I've got one, two, three over here connected. If later on I can pull this off, then I've got four of them connected. And I'm going to get, assuming that I have a network of four exits connected at the end of the game, that is 12 victory points. All right. So 
That's the general flow of the game. Again, don't forget about the special ones up here. End of the game. Let's say I got a, I got a network of four and I got another network of three exits. That is going to add up to 20, and I would write 20 right there. The longest road is one, two, three, four, five, let's say, so I get five points for that. Longest railroad track, let's say I got uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, so I will get six points for that. Let's say in the center, I used up uh, six of those, all right? So I'm going to get six points for that as well. And then for everything that was not connected to something, like this one, for example, that is an error. So I would mark those, and I would lose victory points for them. In this case, minus three. Normally, it's more than minus three. This one, as I said, is not used unless you're playing with a variant. And then you add up all of this, uh, which is uh, 32... 37 minus 3 is 34. And that would be my final score in the game. In the red box, you are going to have craters and you are going to have lava. So let's take a look at the craters. You're going to roll these together with the other dice. The game is going to last one round fewer, by the way. Only six rounds, not seven. And you are going to draw in a crater. You start counting from the center during the very first round. One, two, down. And you are going to put in here a crater. This is going to destroy anything that was in its path. You would then, for the next round, do it again. In this case, two this way. So we're going to put another crater right here. And at the end of the game, any road that leads to that crater, or any uh, railroad track that leads to that crater, is going to give you some victory points. You can also get rid of one of them to draw one of the roads you rolled into it. But uh, that's a way for you to get some more victory points, but also have your planning messed with you. The other dice are these lava dice. And these are going to, as you roll them, you are going to add lava to the game. You're just going to color that in. And then this is going to just not allow you to build into it. You are going to, uh, it's going to spread. You can even start a new one. So if you want, you can put lava, you know, over here and do something like that. You're allowed to do that. But basically you are going to get some bonus points if you have a lake of lava that is completely enclosed, meaning there are no errors in it. So if it's completely, you know, surrounded, no open sides, you are going to get five bonus points for every one of those you're able to manage. And you're also gonna get one bonus point for every tile that makes up your biggest uh, lava pool, lava lake. So, that is the red dice. The blue dice are going to give you a couple of other variants. You have the lake and you've got the river. So, the river is basically works as a new type of route. You're going to be rolling that. You don't have to take these if you don't want to. But you are going to draw, let's say I get uh, that for example. I could do a river like so. And then maybe this one I could put there. This one has a road that goes through it, so the river would go underneath that highway. There you go. And then at the end of the game, you are going to get some bonus points for the river as well. And you want to try to make sure that that river ends up, you know, going off the board or something like that. Just to have it capped off and get some bonus points that way. I would get one point for each space that river is made up of. One, two, three, four, five. If both ends are capped off, a bonus three for eight victory points. And uh, don't forget that every expansion is one round less, so I'm playing only six times. The other one is the lake. The lake one here is going to allow me to draw lakes on the board, much like the lava spread. But in this case, it is not destructive. In fact, it's going to likely help you. You're going to roll these. And then you are going to add water somewhere and you are going to see there's sometimes a pier somewhere on the tiles. So I might get uh, this one here that lets me do something like that. Keep adding water and I might have this one that gives me a little pier there. Uh, that is a railroad track like so. What that means is any railroad track that runs into this spot on this side of the lake, let's say there is another pier over here that comes out of this and goes into a highway, let's say. 
and this is all water, well, this is connected to the other side of the lake. And so you can have a really nice big network when you are utilizing the, uh, the river uh, dice here. It just gives you the ability to really connect some incredible networks and it feels like you're doing quite a bit. So that is the river and the lake expansions. All right, so that is Railroad Inc. Let's talk about it. I'm gonna start with thematic ties. Is the theme original? Is it well implemented in the game? I think it is. It's, uh, it, I, I like the idea of uh, connecting all of these different places, of using your routes as smartly as possible, and then when you throw in some of the special dice on top of that, then of dealing with these sort of unforeseen circumstances. Sometimes positive, but sometimes very negative. So the theme I enjoy here works well. The aesthetics, component quality, artwork, things like that. I love the look of the package. I love the way this is put together with the uh, magnetic clasp. The player boards here are very well done as well. They have largely been sturdy for me. I like them. Dice are well made, though I would do worry about them rubbing off. They are just, uh, you know, like screen printed on there. They're not edged. Uh, markers have behaved themselves so far. So I like all of that. My only issue here with the aesthetics is the fact that it's kind of easy to, you know, wipe these off by mistake while you're playing. I would not hate a slightly larger format of this. That might be that might be a nice maybe deluxe version of something. So for the most part, I do like the components here though and the artwork. Everything looks quality. Replayability. Does it scale well? Are there new things to discover? Things like that. Certainly scales well. This is one of those games you can play with as many people as you want to, really, as long as everybody, I guess, can, can see the dice. Hence, you can buy both and combine them. As far as uh, new things to discover, this game is considerably deeper than it might at first appear. There's a lot going on in the game. You're going to have a lot of choices. It is not one of the... Uh, it's not a breezy roll and write game. Uh, certainly not as much as most others. You are going to get at least four dice every round that you have to contend with. This is not one of those games where you um, flip a card, draw a line or something, or even just roll a single die or take a single face. You're going to have to do it all. The turns might take a few minutes. So there is a lot going on. That's going to lead to some replayability. And then on top of that, you throw these in there and you're going to have a lot to explore. Game length. Is it interesting the whole time? Does it get repetitive? Anything like that? I think um, six or seven rounds is pretty good. It's going to start getting a little clogged on the board, so the visual clarity might be a little rough, um, especially later in the game. It depends how you are with that. But um, for the most part, game length is good. I think it's over when it needs to be. Uh, the space obviously works out. The math works out. So I don't have a problem with that aspect in the game. Ease of play. Uh, as I said, I think I got a, a little bit visually cluttered. I think you have to be careful about smudging things. And I think you uh, there's a lot of little sort of bookkeeping that needs to be done to make sure really that you're not making mistakes. That's it. This is a game that a few times while playing, I kept thinking to myself, man, this would be easier as an app. <laughs> you know, it's got that quality a little bit. If this was made into an app, I think it would be a lot of the little issues I'm having with it that are not many, but a lot of the small issues I'm having with it would simply vanish. Um, that doesn't mean the game's... It's not the game's fault, right? It's just sort of a delivery system idea. But I do find it a little bit fiddly to have to draw such tiny details sometimes. You know, you start getting sloppy with your railroad and so on. It looks beautiful on the back of the box, you know. But once you start doing it, especially if you're, you know, if your hands shake a bit or you're maybe not as careful or your markers are starting to go, it's going to get a little sloppy maybe. Lastly, tactics and strategy. Is it too lucky? Is it balanced? Are there interesting choices? Certainly balanced. Everybody's using the same dice and the only other thing that might change is when you use your special ones. Another level of, of uh, strategy, by the way. But there's certainly a lot going on in the game, even without including the special dice, which some people might not like. They do add some luck to the game, especially the red ones. There is a lot to consider in this game. You know, how you score, where do you focus? Do you make sure that you are putting a lot of tracks in the center here to get a whole lot of points that way? How long is your longest road? 
what are you connecting? Most of your points are going to come from that, but you know, you got it's going to have to be pretty it's going to be tough to get everything connected across from uh, each other. So, you know, where do you focus? Lots going on. You also got to be careful about leaving the open ones. That's going to penalize you. So I would say that there is certainly a lot of strategy in this game. Yes, you're reacting to the die roll every time, but what you prepare for, how you use those dice, what special faces you take, that's very strategic. So there's quite a bit going on in this one. It's a, it's a game that surprised me by its depth, not to say it's the heaviest game ever, but by these standards, roll and write standards, this has quite a bit going on in it. So I do enjoy it. I think it is production-wise lovely and gameplay-wise really deceptively interesting and engaging. So there you go. That is Railroad Inc. I certainly am going to give this one a seal of approval, in my opinion. If you're only getting one, get the blue one. I like this one better myself. But, hey, if you intend to play with a big group, then go ahead and grab both anyway. There you go, folks. Railroad Inc. Seal of approval, as I said. I'm Z Garcia. I want to see you on the next one. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews, as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com.